Thank you very much, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Merci beaucoup pour euh, l'invitation et aussi pour euh, l'opportunité de discuter un sujet euh, très important. Et aussi merci à vos, votre équipe. Uh, thank you very much for, for coming. Um, I often say that for two years I had a job for, for the United Nations that left me with a heavier heart, but also with greater hope for the future. That sounds like a paradox, but I will explain why. What I will tell you now added, I would say, to the first effect, and then to the other effect as well. And I'll start in December 2011 in Kampala, in Uganda, uh, where there was a meeting of the leaders of the Great Lakes region. So the, all the presidents were there, ministers, vice presidents, the whole leadership of that very um, strained region in the world and conflict-ridden uh, region of the world. Uh, then I was called uh, to my hotel and uh, told that there were a group of people who desperately wanted to see me and my team working on conflict-related sexual violence. Um, and we had a rather charged program, so we were looking for a slot to be able to meet them, but we said, and, and the person who, who linked us up said, well, they are women and children, all of them. And they were meant to meet with the presidents. They were promised to be able to meet with the presidents to present their case and their situation, but uh, they, they could not, uh, they wouldn't meet them. So we said, of course, we'll go and meet them. So in that room was a group of, of women, young women, or I would say girls, and uh, children. And maybe it was just because I, the first thing I said to them was how fantastic uh, your children are, because they were very happy running around, playing, screaming, uh, asking for mama, and, and lively and healthy, apparently. So I, I commented on, on their children, and I think that actually made the, the difference, because then they would accept to, to talk and to tell their stories. And the first woman who spoke um, said that I am one of Kony's wives, at least that is what I have been called, and so are the other young women here. We are called Kony's wives, and these are his children, uh, although we cannot be sure who in many cases, uh, are the, uh, is the father. Um, and this young woman, she was, uh, I think, 23. She had been taken, her, she, uh, her and her brother were taken from uh, their house, were playing outside the, their hut, and um, the uh, LRA came and uh, abducted both of them, took them to uh, the forest, and... Uh, it started with uh, a gang rape of this, uh, this young girl. She was then at um, uh, 13 years old. And uh, then they said, now your brother watched all of this and we cannot keep him as a, a witness. So she was forced to kill her own brother and that was how her life in the jungle with the LRA started. So she had spent 10 years with the, the LRA as a soldier, as a foot soldier. And at the same time, you know, carrying a gun, carrying ammunition, um, food utensils maybe on her head, uh, often with a child, uh, bearing a child, uh, with child or a child by the hand through the jungle, and very often serving as a kind of sex slave uh, during night. Her hands were, she looked young, but her hands were like the hands of a very old person. And her, I think that her soul was that of a very old person. But she said that now I'm safe because these um, uh, older elderly women have uh, been our sort of coaches and, and uh, helpers throughout this process um, when we left the, um, the LRA. Um, and I think that these stories, because they then one after the other told their horrific stories of the brutality of the LRA, um, and I, I think that that taught us something very important. Also the disappointment, of course, um, uh, over not being able to meet with the leaders to tell them that this is 
um, life as we uh, know it. This is uh, our reality and this is what you will have to face and do something about. So the LRA has systematically worked in, in this way uh, all, over almost three decades now. I think they do it because they are well aware of why it is so effective. And of course, sexual violence um, being both silent and cheap and effective. They know that this will split the family immediately. They know that this will attack human dignity through the nature of these crimes. They know that this will immediately remove all the security or safety that a child is so dependent upon. And this is not an unusual method. We've seen it from Sierra Leone, from many other places in, in the world, Liberia uh, as well, where very often the rebels would um, take a child and in front of the family or the whole village force them to maybe rape a sister or a mother and then kill them to say, now we have severed all the links to your old family. We are now your family. You no longer have a, a, a family. We are the, the new family. It will destroy the social fabric in a society and it will leave a very heavy imprint on society for generations to come. And it will spread fear and terror uh, in an instant. So how on earth can this small army, because I think the current estimate is that somewhere between 500 and 700 soldiers still cause so much uh, uh, damage. Um, well, maybe that uh, figure has already been, been revised, but uh, anyhow, um, and the numbers uh, uh, are, are, are sometimes even smaller, but how can they cause so much uh, uh, damage? And my, my Congolese friend uh, says that, well, you should just know what that forest look, looks like. You should just see what the forest in, uh, uh, in that area, what it looks like, how easy it is for somebody who knows his or, or her ways through jungle can hide. You would not, it's like having a blanket of, of, of trees and green over you and you really have to know your, your way. To read the UN reports from uh, the field is deeply depressing um, and unfortunately I recognize it. I recognize the language where evil is transformed into um, the sort of everyday banality or a figure is repeated over and over again. It looks small but it adds up to uh, enormous numbers and uh, an enormous amount of suf suffering and again it's the everyday situation that turns into terror. The, the siblings playing in the yard, the three boys who go fishing, or a transport on the dirt road um, through the, uh, the village, or that girls, the girl that goes to fetch water. There is no lack of ambitious and good UN resolutions and also actions. Of course, MONUSCO, uh, the UN uh, troops in uh, the DRC in, in Congo, um, has been reinforced. Um, the, um, the African Union, of course, has sent troops, um, many, uh, many soldiers uh, and peacekeepers. The European Union is contributing. Uh, the US have, still have their around 100 advisors, as they are called, uh, in place. Um, and there are a number of thousands uh, of, um, of soldiers, UN uh, soldiers, uh, in, in place. And we also have special representatives from the UN, um, both for, for the LRA and for, for this area. And now we have also Mary Robinson as a special envoy for the Great Lakes region. And I think that is an important political element added recently. There are also a number of positive... Um, events that I think deserve uh, mentioning because there have been uh, unprecedented defection from the LRA. 
uh, also in rather high numbers and with commanders, high-ranking commanders uh, as well. There has been a come home uh, defection campaign that uh, has also yielded uh, results. So it's not that the international community is not doing anything or, or helping. Um, there have been, uh, as I said, high commanders also um, uh, being caught, uh, people who have been close to, to Kony. There, there is a reduction in the number of attacks, uh, and there are also speculation now about Kony having left uh, the country and not being sure exactly where, where he is. But um, still, we have close to 400,000 people, and this is the figure again mentioned in some UN reports, um, um, that are displaced uh, persons because of, of this. Uh, the LRA are still active. It's just that they have changed their location, so moving um, more to, to the north. Uh, there is a reduction in the numbers, and I read somewhere that last year 51 people um, killed by, by the LRA compared with more than 700 just a couple of years uh, before that but they have changed their, their geographical location. They have now started uh, um, be, being more active on poaching and poaching elephants. So it means that they have to look for new ways of getting money to finance their, their weapons and their, um, their fighting. They are still as brutal, although the morale uh, seems to be weakened among uh, the LRA uh, soldiers uh, fighting, and they are, as I said, very good at hiding in this dense uh, jungle. The report describes uh, in two words exactly where we are. There is uncertainty about uh, the exact situation, about the location of, of these troops and Kony him, himself, and there is insecurity. And again, that reflects, of course, the fear and terror that this will start again or that any, anywhere, anytime, a new attack could come. And the resources have moved, of course, from the international community and all the help and assistance. The resources have moved from LRA, uh, fighting LRA, to, of course, the Central African Republic and the whole regional insecurity and the... the um, the very um, the huge problems in South Sudan uh, and helicopters are missing. And again, it has to, this is important because without helicopters you cannot go anywhere. You cannot transport the soldiers. You, you really need the helicopters. And now they are needed elsewhere or they are brought elsewhere. So the most important, Linda, I will finish with that. Don't give up. The international community must not give up the fight against LRA. They have to mobilize more helicopters. They have to keep the international interest and engagement up because they are not the Lord's children. They are not Kony's children. They are our children and they deserve a future. Thank you. <laughs>